Amen. Amen. Well, thus far we have been our focus in the study of Ezra 7:9. Uh, naše zameranie v štúdiu Ezdraša 7:9 has been uh, looking into the story of Ezra itself. Ako sa pozeráme do príbehu Ezdraša samotného. And then how that history repeats in the time of the Millerites. Ako sa tieto dejiny opakujú v čase Milleritov. Uh, but Now we want to bring this history at the end of the world. Teraz chceme priniesť tieto dejiny na koniec sveta. Based on the premise we know in this movement that Millerite history repeats to the very letter. Na základe predpokladu, ktoré vieme v, totom, v tomto hnutí, že história Milleritov sa opakuje. And if Millerite history is a repetition of Ezra, ak história Milleritov je opakovanie Ezraša, More specifically the second angels the, the part of the second angel je súčasťou druhého aniela actually the entire, the entire line i believe vlastne celá tá línia verím and um, we're going to try to bring this information at the end of the world pokusíme sa priniesť túto informáciu na koniec sveta so um, This is the line of the Millerites. Toto je línia Milleritov. 1798. Ako príde prvý aniel? Then 1840 we know the first angel is going to be empowered. Potom 1840 prvý aniel bude zmocnený. And this is a testing process for the Protestant uh, which was God's people at the time. Toto je čas skúšky pre protestantov, čo bol Boží ľud v tom čase. They're going to be tested on the preaching of time as we have been learning. Oni vlastne uh, boli skúšaní ohľadne času, jak sme Definite aj hovorili, time, určitého času. As it was shown in, in the 1843 chart. Ako to bolo ukázané v 1843 tabulke. But they're going to reject it. Ale oni to odmietnú. And therefore the second angel arrives. Takže druhý aniel príde. And is announcing the fall of Babylon. A ohlási pád Babylona. And this we have been that it takes place at the first disappointment. A toto sme vysvetlovali, že sa to deje pri prvom sklamaní. Because there were few aspects that needed to be fine-tuned in the Millerite message. Boli dva aspekty, ktoré museli byť doladené v histórii Milleritov alebo v, v posolstve Milleritov. But the Lord had used it to test the Protestants. Ale Boh to použil, aby skúšal protestantov. And show that they didn't love the coming of the Lord. <coughs> didn't love. A to ukázalo, že oni nemilovali príchod svojho Pána. Um, we also learned there is a tearing time. Tiež sme sa naučili, že je tu čas vyčkávania. And um, Okay. So this history we we have been looking into this history. You have this is first day of the first month. Do týchto dní sme sa vždycky Then pozerali. Have, uh, you have the ten, Day of the seventh month. Well, I'm going to do it a little bit larger. Um, here. What did I just say? The tenth day of the seventh month? Okay. Desiatý deň siedmeho mesiaca. And midway, you have July 21st, Na which is the fifth day of the fourth month. Je 21. júl, 5. deň 4. mesiaca. 
A máme tu prvý deň 5. mesiaca. Spravíme teraz takú základnú logiku toho, že ako toto prenesieme do nášho času. Vieme, že toto je čas konca, časť A. This is time of the nth part B. Čas konca, čas B. And um, then we have the event that we understand repeats Millerite history. Potom máme udalosť, ktorú rozumieme, že sa opakuje v histórii Milleritov. Um, this is, well, let's... Máme tu udalosť, ktorá opakuje charakteristiky augusta 11. A chápeme, že to je 911. V našej línii toto je príchod prvého aniela 89. Potom je posilnený. To boli zvesti od severa, posilnené vlastne zvestiami od východu. Toto je v histórii Milleritov, kedy 1840. august prišiel ku koncu. Druhé beda prišiel ku koncu a prichádza tretie beda. Máme mocného aniela, ktorý zostupuje. Má malú knižku otvorenú. A odtiaľ to, 1840 a je mocný prejav Božej moci. Lebo posolstvo ide z toho lokálneho do celosvetového. Toto predstavuje zostúpenie toho aniela zo zjavenia 18. Čo je aniel, ktorý osvietí túto zem svojou slávou. Ale keď tento aniel hovorí svoje posolstvo, je to opakovanie druhého aniela. Brother Pramidor has been showing us the logic of how the second angel arrived in this history. Brat Parminder nám ukazoval logiku toho, že ako druhý aniel prišiel v týchto dejinách. A na jednej úrovni to tu bolo dokončené. Ale na druhej úrovni ide to nadalej cez dejiny. Počas našich dejín až do kým je to dokončené. Takže tieto dejiny sa budú opakovať znova v našich dejinách. Toto je zjavenie 18. Opakuje to to isté posolstvo ako druhý aniel. Takže sme zjavenie toto s 9.11. Čiže to spájame z 9.11. Spôsob, akým to tu reprezentujem, není to proporcionálne. Ale toto sú dve čistenia chrámu, ktoré sú následované mileritmi. And 
from 9-11, you have once again the temple cleansing for God's people, followed by temple cleansing of the world. A od 9.11 máme znova čistenie uh, chrámu Božieho ľudu, ktoré je nasledované čistením chrámu sveta. So what we want to simply put in place or um, is right now is just this experience that took place under the second angel. Táto skúsenosť, ktorá sa udiala pod druhým anielom. We're going to bring it here. Prinesieme sem. Along with the angel of revelation 18, the arrival of the second angel in in this history. Spolu so zjavením 18 s príchodom druhého aniela v týchto dejinách. So we have here Máme tu, uh, we're going to be marking a tearing time. Máme tu čas vyčkávania. And um, there is also disappointment. Je tu sklamanie. And we should expect to see a repetition of this way marks as well. Mali by sme očakávať, že uvidíme opakovanie týchto milníkov tiež. So this is the, the basic premise of this uh, study. We, to, to je základný predpoklad tejto štúdie. With this in mind, let's jump to page 34 on po, our notes. Poďme na stranu 34 do našich poznámok. And we're going to see first day of the first month became a Bible symbol. Prvý deň prvého mesiaca sa stal biblický symbol. That You're going to find it in different stories in the Bible. Nájdete to v rôznych príbehoch Biblie. And proof texting, you can bring those those uh, stories wherever that symbol is found. A dokazovaním textu tam, kde ten symbol nájdeme, prinesieme rôzne príbehy. And you can lay them on top uh, of either April 18th a dáme na vrch apríla 18 April 19th sorry April 19 18th apríl 1844 and uh, also 9/11 a 9/11 so this is what we're going to do we're going to look next into these stories where you have This symbol. Pozrieme sa do týchto príbehov, kde, kde sa nachádza tento symbol. So, there is six Bible verses, um, where we're going to be looking into. All of them are found in your notes, so we, we can read directly from your notes. Um, and remember that we're going to try to... Uh, Brother Praminder has been uh, bringing to our attention that the first thing we should do is we should look these things into their original context, historical context. Brother Praminder said that first we should look at these things in their original context. To, give, to get its fullest uh, in, uh, information, the impact of the information that it contains. Aby sme mali tú plnú informáciu, ktorú to obsahuje. And I acknowledge, I haven't done that with all of these texts, with some of these texts at least. Viem, že som to nespravil so všetkými týmito textami. We basically have just jump strictly to the application either in Millerite history or our history. Išli sme iba rovno do tej aplikácie. So I'm sure there is details there that we're still not understanding that they just need to be brought into further clarity. Takže sú tam určite ešte detaily, ktorým zatiaľ nerozumieme a musíme si ich objasniť. But we will see what we can we can see right now. Let's go to as in your notes page 34 to Ezra 10:16 and 17 is dealing with strange wives. <coughs> tak poďme uh, pozrieť do poznámok. So this is Ezra 10. 
Esdraž 10, 16 a 17. In the story of Ezra, as we mentioned yesterday, ako sme hovorili včera, he became aware that there was a problem. Uh, zistil, že je nejaký problém. He arrived to Jerusalem on the first day of the fifth month. Prišiel do Jeruzalema prvý deň 5. mesiaca. Then in the decree that he had been given, it mentioned that he needed to appoint judges, he needed to appoint um, magistrates to execute laws. V dekretovi, ktorý mu bol daný, tam bolo vlastne napísané v dekrete, že, že má ustanovi sudcov, vládárov. So he was done, this was done on the month. To spravil 7. mesiaca. Pravdepodobne 10. deň 7. mesiaca. And then when we got to chapter 10, we read about In chapter 9 and chapter 10 Ezra becomes aware of this problem with the strange wives. Kapitol 9 a 10 Ezdraž pochopí tento problém s tými to cudzozemkami. And he's ready to take action and he's gonna this is the opportunity for these judges that had been appointed here to start executing or functioning as as judges and attaching sentences to these transgressions. A toto je čas pre, tú, uh, pre tých sudcov, aby vlastne začali vykonávať tú svoju funkciu. Už tri dní to asi robili. Ale rozpoznali, že tejho diela je moc a že to za takú krátku chvíľu nemohli urobiť. So they're gonna take a longer time And then when we come to verse 16 and 17, Takže si zobrali viacej času a keď prídeme do verša 16 a 17. We read, and the children of the captivity did so, and Ezra the priest with certain chief of the fathers after the house of their fathers, and all of them by their names were separated and sat down in the first day of the tenth month to examine the matter. Mm, teraz neviem, ktorý čítal verš, ale myslím, že z 10. kapitoly. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Aha, 16. Ezdraž 10, 16 a 17. Čítam 17. A dokončili pri všetkých mužoch, ktorí si boli vzali za ženy cudzozemky do prvého dňa prvého mesiaca. To the beginning, first day of the first month. Znova nás to privádza na začiatok, prvý deň prvého mesiaca. Of course, one year later, right? O rok neskôr. But as a symbol, Ale we would symbol? place it right here, either, well, both. In Millerite history, it would be in April 19th. Aj v histórii Milleritov to bude 11. apríl. And September 11. 11. 2001, september. Môžeme to nazvať 9.11. So what is the meaning of this? Strange wives, we understand woman is a symbol of a church. Cudozemky chápeme, že to je symbol ženy. Žena je církev. They are composed or of doctrines, they're made up of doctrines ktorá má svoje učenie. So in Millerite history what happened as a result of the first disappointment Millerite history ako výsledok prvého sklamania is that they found themselves separated. Je, že, sa, že sa vlastne oddelili. Boli odmietnutí. So It's marking a separation from the in this story. Takže nám to zaznačuje. Oddelenie sa od týchto padlých protestantských cirkví. Separation. Oddelenie sa from fallen Protestantism. Od odpadlého protestantizmu. 
but more specifically their false doctrines. Ovia špecificky falošné do učenie. In our history 9/11 našich dejinách 9:11 there's also a call of separation from false doctrines. Je povolanie oddeliť sa od tohto falošného učenia. And uh, brother Parminder has been addressing this directly. Brat Parminder o tomto hovoril priamo. One of the uh, the primary ones that as a movement we have invived I mean Adventism in general. Jeden z najhlavnejších, ktorý sme ako adventizmus prijali vo všeobecnosti, nerozumieme prorockému času. Nerozumieme prorockému času. So there is, there is a call from 9-11 and onwards it's to separate from anything that is not founded in the word of god máme povolanie vlastne sa oddeliť od falošného učenia ktoré má svoj pôvod v babylone then we can go to the next passage potom môžeme ísť do ďalšej pasáže This is separation from false doctrines. Next passage we found in Ezekiel 29:17 through 21. Ďalšia pasáž je v Ezechielovi 29:17 až 21. Um, this one we were going to read it first. Chceme najprv toto prečítať. And it came to pass in the 7 and 20th year in the first month in the first day of the month the word of the Lord came unto me saying son of man Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon caused his army to serve a great service against Tyrus every head was made bald and every shoulder was peeled yet he had no wages nor his army for Tyrus for the service he, that he had served against it a bolo 27. roku prvého mesiaca, prvého dňa toho mesiaca, že stalo sa slovo hospodinovo ku mne povediac. Synu človeka Nabuchodonozor, babylonský král, naložil svojmu vojsku veľkú službu proti Týru. Každá hlava je oplešivená a každé plece je odra- odrané, ale nemá mzdy ani on, ani jeho vojsko z Týru za službu, ktorú konal proti I will give the land of Egypt unto Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and he shall take her multitude and take her spoil and take her prey and it shall be the wages for his army. Preto takto hovorí pán hospodin hľadám na buchodonozorovi babylonskému kráľovi egyptskú zem a odnesie množstvo jej bohatstva a poberie jej korisť a ulúpi jej lúpež a to budem zdou jeho vojsku. I have given him the land of Egypt for his labor wherewith he served against it because they wrought for me said the Lord God. Za jeho plácu za ktorú slúžil dám mu egyptskú zem pretože to vykonali mne hovorí pán hospodin. In that day will I cause the horn of the house of Israel to bud forth and I will give thee the opening of the mouth in the midst of them and they shall know that I am the Lord toho dňa spôsobím to, aby vyrastol roh domu Izraelovmu a tebe dám to, aby si otvoril ústa prostredných a zvedia, že ja som hospodín. Takže tento text nás dáva na prvý deň prvého mesiaca prorocky. Bez toho, aby sme dávali pozornosť na ten kontext, pôjdeme rovno na aplikáciu. Sú tu dva komponenty. The king of the north is going to receive wages for his work. Král severa dostane mzdu za svoje dielo. It consists in one in uh, he's going to it's territory or he's going to get a country. Dostane krajinu alebo teritorium. The land of Egypt he says. Krajinu Egyptsku. It says that in that day 
the horn of the house of Israel is going to bud forth. A tiež sa píše, že v ten deň uh, dom Izraela vy, vypučí. And what is that cost in the Bible the things to bud forth? A čo sú veci v Biblii, ktoré vypučia? Is the rain. To je dážď. So it's, it's talking about rain coming upon God's people in that day. Hovorí to o daždi, ktorý príde na Boží ľud to, v ten deň. A otvorím prostred nich tvoje ústa, že bude im niesť posolstvo. So, we understand that after 1798, po 1798, the stage of Bible prophecy ten stav biblického prorodstva sa presunul uh, z nového sveta do, z do starého do nového sveta. So what could the papacy be receiving in April 19th? Čo papežstvo by... it has to be connected with the US. Čo by papežstvo mohlo prijať 19. apríla, musí to mať niečo spojením so Spojenými štátmi. Uh, píše sa tu, že je tu uh, roh, ktorý vypučieva. A to nám pripomína, že, že Spojené štáty to je národ s dvoma rohmi. So they, The papacy, the king of the north, is going to be, it's in a process, in a long, pro, pro, in a long process of conquering the United States. Čiže papežstvo je v dlhom procese po, uh, vlastne uh, zvýťazenia nad Spojenými štátmi. And he's going to accomplish it in two steps. A dosiahne to v dvoch krokoch. He's going to conquer first one of the horns of the United States in this history, Najprv to porazí roh Spojených štátov. The religious horn, the Protestantism. Ten náboženský roh, protestantizmus. And then is going to continue striving until conquering the um, political horn of the United States. A potom vlastne bude bojovať až po, porazí ten politický roh Spojených štátov. Which is um, republicanism. Čo je republikanizmus. And in April 19th the Protestant churches the, of the United States of America April 19 Spojených štátoch amerických by virtue of rejecting the everlasting gospel tým že odmietli večné evangelium they render, render themselves incapable to resist the, the King of the North, the papacy. Urobili sa neschopnému, neschopnými vlastne odporovať kráľovi severa papežstvu. And the papacy since then he has Protestantism in his grasp. A odtedy papežstvo má protestantizmus vlastne vo svojej moci. As religious bodies ako ľudia they no longer have the ability to understand truth. Už nemajú schopnosť porozumieť pravde. So, so the papacy defeated one aspect of the United States, the religious aspect early in this history. Papežstvo porazilo vlastne ten uh, náboženský aspekt v týchto dejinách. And this, this lines up with um, April 19th, the arrival of the second angel proclaiming the fall of Babylon. A toto je v línii s aprílom 19, kde sa uh, vlastne hovorí, že padol, padol Babylon. In 9-11, Pri 9.11 now, there have been some developings leading up to 9-11. Bolo, boli určité vývoje, ktoré viedli k 9.11. We know that there was some coming together of the United States with the papacy, some flirting. Vieme, že pápežstvo sa nejako spájalo so Spojenými štátmi. And, um, there was some 
And as a result of that, the, this cooperation, you had the first obstacle being overcome. Bola tu nejaké sveté spojenectvo tajné a vlastne ako um, výsledok to bolo, že bola porazená prvá prekažka v 89. But when you get to 9-11, Ale keď prídeme k 9.11, the the, the papacy has also the political component of the United States with, uh, within his grasp. He has control uh, Papežstvo má vlastne ako keby v moci aj mm, politiku Spojených štátov. And at this time the United States as a nation spoke. A v tomto čase urobili ako štát taký is a decree or the Patriot Act urobili vlastne dekret ako Patriot Act, that contains some, it's a precedent, it's, it's, this law goes against some constitutional principles. Uh, ten, to, tento zákon ide proti určitým ústavným zákonom. So it's setting a precedent. Uh, Je to vlastne precedent. Is giving us a sign or an indication. Je to pre nás také znamenie alebo that the US is prepared at this time to pass an oppressive laws. Že Spojené štáty sú už pripravené zaviesť um, také utlačajúce zákony. Um, okay. Then about the that is dealing with the first aspect The other aspect that we mark here or ďalší aspekt, ktorý tu zaznamenávame is while this Protestant con- horn was conquered in Millerite history. Zakiaľ tento protestantský roh by uh, porazil Millerickú uh, históriu. On the 19th. O 19. apríla. The Republican horn was conquered in 9/11. A republikánsky roh uh, bol porazený pri 9.11. We have a budding forth of the horn of the house of Israel. Mali by sme vypúčanie rohu Izraela. This is marking the, the rain. Toto zaznamenáva dážď. And in our history this 9.11 našich dejinách for the trees we are understanding this is our early rain. Pre kňazov rozumieme, že toto je náš skorý dážď. And I believe in the Millerite history April 19 will also be the early rain, right? Vieme, že v histórii Millerite to bude ten skorý dážď. But it's, it's the rain that is causing this. Je to dážď, ktorý spôsobuje toto. <coughs> At the end of the world we are living in the time of the latter rain. Na konci sveta žijeme v čase neskorého dažďa. Okay. So next verse, um, Ďalší. Genesis 8:13. Ďalší verš Genesis 8:13. Um, this is another verse that I'm sure must contain more information that what we're in, and I'm understanding here. Myslím, že tuto sa tiež je, je napísané viacej toho, jak ja tam vidím. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, 601. roku prvého mesiaca, day of the month, prvého dňa toho mesiaca, the waters were dried up from the, from the earth, from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. Vyskli vody z povrchu zeme. Tu odstranil Noach prorokov Koraba a videl a hľa už bol obsknú povrch zeme. So what we have done here is take this, this figure of water being dry, dried up. Čo sme urobili je, že sme zobrali tieto vody, ktoré vyschli. And seen other verses where you have synonymous or you have similar uh, figures of water being drying or failing. 
A videli sme iné verše, ktoré sú ako synonym vlastne toho, že tie vody vyschli. Alebo... V Jeremiášovi 15, 16 a 17 where we find a story je príbeh, that I'm sure it was fulfilled in Jeremiah's day, but it surely reflects what the experience of the Millerites in April 19, 1844. Reflektuje to skúsenosť, ktorú zažili Milleriti 19. apríla 1844. Našiel som tvoje slova a zjedol som ich a tvoje slovo bolo na radosť môjmu srdcu. For I am called by thy name, o Lord, God of hosts. Som povolaný tvojim menom, Pane. So the the book, je to jedenie malej knižky. Into with the Lord, his name. A vojdúc do um, zmluvy s ním a dostať jeho meno. And I sat not in the assembly of the mockers nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of thy hand for thou hast filled me with indignation. Sedím, uh, nesedím v spoločnosti posmievačov, ani neplesám pre tvoju ruku sedávam so samotný. So talking about this process of separation that took place after the Protestants were mocking the Millerites after the first disappointment. Toto je ten proces rozdelenia, ktorý sa stal vlastne po tom, čo Milleriti sa vysmievali. Mm, protestanti sa vysmievali Milleritom. Prišiel to ako výsledok Božej ruky. Vlastne Pán Boh uh, prikryl 2300 večerov a rán. Toto má aplikáciu v čase Milleritov. Right there at the first disappointment. Hneď tam pri prvom sklamaní. And then notice how Jeremiah expresses this. this why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable? Why which refused to be healed will thou be altogether unto me as a liar and as waters that fail a tak toto Jeremiáš vysvetluje um, prečo je moja bolesť večná moja rana od úderu smrteľná ktorá sa nechce zahojiť či mi budeš ako klamlivý potok ako neverné vody you remember in habakkuk you don't need to go there it just the familiar verse habakkuk 2:3 it says uh, And at the end, speaking about the vision, at the end it shall speak and not lie. So sa hovorí v Habakukovi, že na konci to videnie prehovorí a nebude klamať. Aj keby predlelo, čakaj naň. So here the Millerites feel that God had lied to them. Čiže Millerite sa cítili, ako keby ich Boh oklamal. And it's compared as waters that fail or dry up. A porovnáva sa to s vodami, ktoré vyschli. And then we jump to another story also in Exodus 17, 1 and 2. Potom sme prešli do nove, druhého prí, príbehu Exodus Because 17. Because we want to take one component from this. Chceli sme si z toho zobrať jeden komponent. And is uh, the story of the journeys of the children of Israel in the wilderness. A sú to vlastne cesty uh, detí Izraela. And read, uh, from 17, 1 and 2. Budeme čítať z Exodusu 17, 1, 2 a 7. It's all in your notes. To... And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after the journeys according to the commandment of the Lord and pitched in Rephidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. Exodus 17, 1 až 2. Potom sa rušala celá obec synov Izraelových, spúšte syn po svojich stanoviskách na rozkaz hospodinov a rozložili sa táborom v predvidíme, kde nebolo vody na pitie pre ľud. So the water dried up or failed. Uh, tie vody vyschli, alebo neboli tam. Continues. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, why chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? 
Preto sa vadil ľud s Mojžišom a vraveli, dajte nám vody, aby sme pili. A Mojžiš im povedal, prečo sa vadíte so mnou? Prečo pokúšate hospodina? So there was some controversy, some quarrel with Moses. Bola určitá hádka s Mojžišom. And then verse 7 it says and he called the name of the place Masa and Meribah. Meribah. Uh, because of the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord saying is the Lord among us or not. A nazval meno toho miesta Mesa a Meriba, pretože sa vadili synovia Izraelovi a pretože pokúšali hospodina tým, že vraveli, či je hospodin medzi nami, či nie je. So the meanings of those words Masa means test. Takže te, tieto slova znamenajú Masa, to je pokúšanie. Or Masa and Meriba, Meriba means quarrel. A Meriba je zvada. Provocation, strife, controversy, debate. Debata. And the spirit of prophecy confirms that. To potvrdzuje duch prorocký. The quote you have under there, we're just going to jump to the la- to the bold face um, in the it's just the last part of the paragraph when it says the Lord caused the waters to cease, it was his purpose again to test his people. It's giving us an example. 29. Uh, 29. odsek v poznámkach, strana 35. Pán spôsobil vyschnutie vôd, jeho cieľom bolo znovu otestovať svoj ľud. That when the waters uh, cease under the direction of God is because there is a test. Čiže keď vyschnú vody pod pánovým vedením, tak je to preto, lebo prichádza skúška. Now we're going to move to the next text. Um, well, Poďme do ďalšieho textu. I have been feeling all the hear the information you have it on your notes on page 38. Nevyplňal som všetky uh, tieto informácie, máte to v poznámkach. Um, waters right up. Vodu, vody vyschnú. Um, okay. <coughs> so we're saying in Millerite history this marks a disappointment. Hovoríme, že v dejinách Milleritov toto zaznačuje sklamanie. It marks a debate. Debatu z vadu. It marks a test. A skúšku. So in 9-11 we should expect the same components. Pri 9-11 by sme mali očakávať rovnaké being repeated. komponenty, uh, zložky, ktoré sa budú opakovať. Now we go to the next text, uh, Genesis a, well, no, sorry, is Exodus, no, yes, Exodus 42, it's on page 36 of my notes, yeah, Exodus 42, ideme do Exodus 42, verses 2, and then we're going to look, verse 16 through 17, Kapitola 40, verše 2 a potom 16 až 17. And 33 a potom 33 až 35. On the first day of the first month shall thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. Thus did Moses according to all that the Lord commanded him, so did he. Prvého dňa prvého mesiaca postavil príbytok stán zhromaždenia a Mojžiš učinil všetko tak, ako mu prikázal hospodin. Um, and it came to pass in the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. A stalo sa to prvého mesiaca druhého roku, prvého dňa toho mesiaca, že bol postavený príbytok. A postavil dvor do okola vokol príbytku altára a zavesil záclonu brány dvora a tak dokončil Mojžiš dielo. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. A oblak zakryl stan zhromaždenia a slava hospodinova naplnila príbytok. 
And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud about thereon and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. A nemohol Mojžiš vojsť do stanu zhromaždenia, pretože prebýval na ňom oblak a slava hospodinova naplnila príbytok. So we have the Máme tu príbytok, ktorý bol pozdvihnutý. Uh, and we have the cloud a máme oblak, ktorý zostupuje. And there is a parallel passage that we probably will only read some excerpts. Je tu paralelná pasáž, ktorú by sme pravdepodobne čítali. Um, okay, let's read verse 15. It's a parallel passage. Verse 15, it's we're in Numbers 9:15. Numery 9:15. Through 23, but we're not going to read all the verses. Až do 23, ale nebudeme to celé čítať. Says, and on the Verse 15, and on the day on and on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony, and at even there was upon the tabernacle as it were the appearance of fire until the morning. A toho dňa, ktorého postavili príbytok, prikryl oblak príbytok, príbytok stanu svedectva a večer bolo vždy nad príbytkom, čo si na pohľad ako oheň až do rána. And he's telling us that the, this cloud is going to be it's going to serve the purpose to lead one of the purposes is going to be to lead the people in their wanderings. Tak bolo vždy oblak ho prikryval vodne a čo si na pohľad ako oheň v noci. A bolo to preto aby oblak viedol ľud. And at, at the commandment of the Lord the children of Israel journey and at the commandment of the Lord they pitch as long as the cloud about about abode upon the tabernacle they rested in their tents. A na rozkaz... and, as, and when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. A na rozkaz toho, že sa dvihol oblak sponad stanu, hneď za prvým sa rušali synovia Izraelovi a zase na mieste, na ktorom dlel oblak, tam taborili synovia Izraelovi. So he's mentioning about the glory of the Lord in that cloud guiding his people. Spomína to tú slávu Pána Boha, uh, a vlastne indicated them when they needed to tarry. A ten im oblak im ukázal, kedy musia čakať. And when they needed to move forward. A kedy sa museli pohnúť. So, on April Testing? Mm-hmm. Testing, testing. Okay. So on April 19th, the 1844, the Millerite Temple is being erected, or it will be, yes, Adventism is being raised up. 19. apríla je po- dostávaný chrám alebo je pozvihnutý adventizmus. Is um, way. Temple erected. Postavený chrám. And in our time, v našom čase the, the cloud there is one of the indications is marking the tearing time. Zaznačenie času vyčkávania. For the Millerites and in our history 9 at 9/11. Našich dejinách pri 9:11. What we are seeing is is the church triumphant that is being erected. Čo vidíme je cirkev víťazná, ktorá je po, po, Understanding as it has been already been mentioned that the stones were prepared uh, previously vlastne in, since 1989. Tie kamene boli pripravené už predtým od 89. ako sme hovorili. Uh, is church triumphant is erected from 9/11. 
Onwards. Církev víťazná je pozdvihnutá od 9.11 hore. Okay. Next verse, um, Ďalší verš. Go to 2 Chronicles 29:15-18. Poďme do druhej paralipomenom 29. 15 až 18. This is dealing with a progressive cleansing of this a sanctuary, the sanctuary. Toto tu vlastne hovorí o postupnom čistení svätyne. And in this passage we're going to see an allusion or a mention of the priest and the Levites. V tejto pasáži uvidíme vlastne, čo sa hovorí o levitoch. It's a purification in two phases. Čistenie je to v dvoch uh, fázach. And it says, verse 15. And they gathered their brethren and sanctified themselves and came according to the commandment of the king by the words of the Lord to cleanse the house of the Lord. A zhromaždili svojich bratov a posvetili sa a prišli podľa rozkazu kráľovho založeného na slovách hospodinových, aby vyčistili dom hospodinov. And the priests went into the inner part of the house of the Lord. Tak vošli kňazi do vnútra do domu hospodinovho. To cleanse it and brought out all the uncleanness that they found in the temple of the Lord into, into the court of the house of the Lord. Aby ho vyčistili a vyniesli všetku nečistotu, ktorú našli v chráme hospodinovom na dvor domu hospodinovho, odkiaľto brali, to brali levitovia, aby to vyniesli von do potoka Kedrona. A začali posvedcovať prvého dňa prvého mesiaca a 8. dňa toho istého. Mesiaca vošli do dvorady hospodinovej. So they sanctified the house of the Lord in eight days. A posvedcovali dom hospodinov za 8 dní. And in the 16th day of the first month they made an end. A 16. dňa toho istého mesiaca dokon- prvého mesiaca okay. dokončili. So it's telling us as we said a progressive cleansing that it has two phases. It goes it begins at the first day of the first month. Má to dve fázy. Začína to v prvý deň prvého mesiaca. And it's telling us the first eight days of this process. Prvých 8 dní tohto procesu. The priests were clean, cleansing the house. Kňazi čistili dom. The inner court. Tam vnútorné nádvorie. And then the Levites were cleansing for another eight days the court. Potom leviti čistili iných 8 dní. So they made an end on the 16th day of the first month. Urobili koniec 16. dňa prvého mesiaca. There is then two categories, priests and Levites. To sú dve kategórie, kňazi a leviti. Doing a work of purification the house of the Lord. Počas tej práce uh, posvedcovania. Progressively. Postupne. Where in what other what first day of the 16th Sorry, 16th day of the first month, where do we see that symbol also? 16. deň prvého mesiaca, kde vidíme ten symbol? That's the date of the feast of the first fruits, right? To je deň prvotín, So this is, this is telling us about an offering. Toto nám hovorí o obeti. That is made up of these two groups ktorá je urobená z týchto dvoch skupín. Just like Christ when he resurrected also there was a group that resurrected with him. Tak ako aj Kristus, ktorý bol skriesený, bola tam skupina, ktorá bola vzkriesená s ním. 
there was another group of saints that resurrected with him. Druhá skupina svetých, ktorí, ktorí vstali s ním. And ascended with him. A so boli it was uh, typifying a, an offering made up of two parts. To bola vlastne obeď urobená z dvoch častí. And number eight is a symbol of resurrection. Číslo 8 je symbolom skriesenia. We, we will skip that, to preskočíme. OK, so we go to the next verse, which is Ezekiel 45:18-29. Ďalší verš je Ezechiel 45:18. OK. Thus said the Lord God, In the first month, in the first day of the month, thou shalt take a young bullock without blemish and cleanse the sanctuary. Takto hovorí host, pán hospodín, prvého mesiaca, prvého dňa toho mesiaca vezmeš junca z hoviad bez vady a očištíš svetiňu od hriechu. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering and put it upon the post of the house and upon the four corners of the settle of the altar and upon the post of the gate of the inner court. A kniaz vezme z krvitej obeti za hriech a dá na podvoje domu a na štyri uhly prepásania oltára a na podvoje brány vnútorného dvora. And so thou shalt do the seventh day of the month for everyone that erreth and for him that is simple so shall ye reconcile the house. Tak učiníš aj 7. dňa toho istého mesiaca pre človeka pobudivšieho a hlúpeho a tak month, sorry, A tak pokryjúc hriech očistíte dom. In the first month in the 14th day of the month ye shall have the Passover a feast of seven days and leavened bread shall be eaten. Prvého mesiaca 14. dňa toho mesiaca budete mať pesach slávnosť 7 dňov je sa budú nekvasené chleby. So it's this example this mention of the first day of the first month is talking also about a progressive cleansing in advance. Toto tiež hovorí o postupnom čistení predtým. of a holy convocation. Svetého zhromaždenia. So In uh, Millerite history, history the, the feast that they were preparing to enter into Sviatok, do ktorého sa chystali vstúpiť, is the, an, uh, the antitypical day of atonement. Je antitypický deň zmierenia. And in our time is a preparation to enter into the day of the Lord. V našom čase je to príprava vojsť do dňa Pánovho. Um, now we're going to switch into the first day of the fifth month. Teraz pôjdeme na prvý deň 5. Uh, mesiaca. We're, we're going to bring our study to a close. A uzavrieme to. This one going to put it here. Um, There is one verse in the Bible that refers to the first day of the fifth month. Biblia je iba jeden verš, ktorý má referenciu na prvý deň prvého mesiaca. And is found in uh, Numbers 33:38. A je to numery 33:38. And it reads, And Aaron the priest went up into the mount Hor at the commandment of the Lord and died there in the 40th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the first day of the fifth month. A Aaron kniaz vyšiel na vrch Hor na rozkaz hospodinov a tam zomrel v 40. roku po videní synov Izraelových z egyptskej zeme. 5. mesiaca, prvého dňa toho mesiaca. So the symbol is the Aaron dies Symbol je, že Aaron zomiera. Now there is a parallel passage found in Deuteronomy 10:6-8. Je tu paralelná pasáž, ktorú nájdeme v 5. Mojžišovej 10. Information. 6 až 8, čo nám dáva druhú novú informáciu. Says, and the children of Israel took their journey from Beeroth 
of the children of Jachan to Mosera. There Aaron died, and there he was buried. And Eliezer, his son, ministered in the priest's office in his stead. A synovia Izraelovi sa rušali z Berod Bene Jakana do Mozera. Tam zomrel Áron a tam je i pochovaný. A kniažský úrad konal Eleazar, jeho syn, miesto neho. Oteľ sa rušali do Gudgody. A z Gudgady do Jodbaty do zeme potokov vody. And at that time the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord to stand before the Lord to minister unto him and to bless in his name unto this day. Toho času oddelil Hospodin pokolenie Levího, aby nosili truhlu z mluvy Hospodinovej, a aby stali pred Hospodinom, aby mu slúžili a aby dávali požehnanie v jeho mene, ako je tomu až do dnešného dňa. So we have the symbol of the death of Aaron. Máme symbol Arona, ako zomiera. Eliezer, A ten je nahradený Eleazarom, jeho synom. Now, the fulfillment in Millerite history naplnenie v histórii Milleritov toho 15. augusta um, Well, before we, I, we want to add another component here. Chceme pridať k tomu ešte jeden komponent. The name Eliezer in the Old Testament. V Novom zákone. This is a Hebrew name. Toto je židovské meno. Can be transliterated into the New Testament. Has been transliterated into the New Testament. V Novom zákone je prenesené into the Hebrew, into the Greek language do greckého jazyka as Lazarus. ako Lazarus. So Eliezer equals Lazarus, but this is in the Hebrew and this is in the Greek. Eleazar je vlastne v hebrejčine a Lazarus je v grečtine, ale je toto isté. Is the same name. Je toto isté meno. So Lazarus what the role that Lazarus plays in in the New Testament in the story of Christ rola ako zohráva Lazarus v novom zákone v príbehu Krista um, illustrates the meaning of the name precisely ilustruje uh, presne význam toho mena both Eliezer and Lazarus mean God's helper aj Eleazar aj Lazarus znamená Boží pomocník so this is referring uh, symbolically to the Holy Spirit toto symbolicky hovorí o duchu svetom. So we we know we're not going to read these paragraphs out because we're running out of time, but you have them in your notes. Viem, viem že sa nám míňa čas. That are dealing with the triumphal entry and we know how Lazarus was part of this. He was leading the uh, the ass that Jesus was riding. Vieme, že Lazarus viedol toho oslíka, na ktorom pán Ježiš sedel. Uh, tento vyťazný vstup do Jeruzalema bol ilustráciou uh, polnočného volania. We're just going to read the last quote of the notes uh, for, for to illustrate this. Says, Prečítame posledný citát, from, poznámok. Well, from 4SP, for Spirit of Prophecy, volume 4, page 250. Je to zo 4SP. The midnight cry was not so much carried by argument, though the scripture, was, the scripture proof was clear and conclusive. There went with it an impelling power that moved the soul. There was no doubt, no questioning. Polnočné volanie nebolo až tak veľmi nesené argumentom. Išla s tým veľká moc, žijúca, žijúca moc. Upon the occasion of Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem, the people who were assembled from all parts of the land to keep the feast flocked to the Mount of Olives. 
ľudia, ktorí boli zo, všadia, zo všetkých miest Jeruzalema, prišli vlastne na Olivový vrch, aby oslavovali Uh, a pomáhali uh, na Liovu hru sprevádzali, že chytili uh, to, toto celé, čo on číta, to je 32. citát z poznámu. So a podobným spôsobom neveriaci did unbelievers who flock to the Adventist meetings some from curiosity some merely to ridicule fail feel the convincing power attending the message behold the bridegroom cometh Neveriaci ktorí sa vplížili na adventistické stretnutia niektorí zo zvedavosti niektorí iba na zosmiešňovanie cítili presvedčivú moc ktorá sa zúčastňuje posolstva hla že nich prichádza Ona to tu porovnáva s tým slávnostným so vstupom was, uh, uh, Eliezer reprezentoval niekoho kto bol skriesený do novoty života. And he was, um, he was participating in this loud proclamation. A zúčastňoval sa na tom silnom hlásaní. So in Millerite history, this is a symbol of the Millerites. Uh, in August 15, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they were um, manifesting the living testimony. Takže v histórii Milleri to boli naplnení Duchom Svetým a e, žili vlastne to svedectvo. A to, čo nám to ukazuje, že na konci sveta aj my v našej skúsenosti budeme mať e, vlastne obnovené to žijúce svedectvo. And only these wise virgins will be allowed to participate of the proclamation behold the bridegroom cometh. Ale tieto múdre družičky sa budú môcť zúčastniť toho hlasania, že nich prichádza. Uh, let's pray. Poďme sa pomodliť. Dear heavenly Father, Drahý nebeský oče, we are already in the hours of the last day of camp meeting. Sme v posledných hodinách tohto zhromaždenia. But through the messages that we are listening, ale skrze posolstva, ktoré poslúchame, we perceive uh, an intensification of power. Cítime, že sa zintenzívňuje tvoja moc and solemnity a vážnosť and i pray that you will help us to um, internalize the the significance of the things we have been hearing a prosím ťa aby si nám pomohol z, naozaj znutorniť závažnosť tých vecí ktoré sme počuli that we may learn them and that they may uh, change us aby nás mohli zmeniť aby sme sa ich mohli naučiť we thank you for the blessing of this um, Convocation. Ďakujeme ti za požehnanie týchto stretnutí and we pray that you will in our midst. a modlíme sa, aby si naďalej žil v našom strede. Prosíme ťa za to v mene Ježiša. Amen.